Young people have inherited a world plagued by the consequences of actions or sometimes inactions of generations before us. Disasters and extreme weather events occur more frequently at a higher magnitude, exacerbating the vulnerability of already marginalized communities and presenting new challenges to developed countries. The earth has no mouth of its own. We are the mouthpiece. The onus is on us. The Philippines is extremely vulnerable to climate change. As per United Nations report, the Philippines ranks third for being one of the most at-risk country in climate change effect. We are also confronted with the plastic pollution problem, polluting our bodies of water and destructing our marine ecosystem. As the climate crisis intensifies, so was the extreme events that has been happening around us. Flooding, sea level rise, drought, which causes food shortage at expensive commodities. Health problems and poverty are aggravated due to unexpected disasters. Nang gagaling ang mga basura ay galing po ito sa mga sapa at mga kanal kasi pag, na, pag malalaki ang malakas po ang ulan yung po ay inaago sila ng, ng tubig papunta sa dagat kaya nakalutang sila sa ilalim ng dagat dahil sa karamihan ng basura na yung iba naman nakalitaw yung isda po tumatakbo na papalayo hindi na wala na kaming nahuhuli dahil sa karamihan ng basura The Care for Climate was the first collaboration of Ann Arbor and Albay YMCA way back in October 2020. We had weekly meetings and shared our commonalities on environmental issues and gave them opportunity to implement community-based action plans. Our trained eco-leader, Rolando, initiated a trash trap project to install nets in the canal that traps all the waste and prevent it from flowing into the river and into the sea. The Ann Arbor YMCA is a founding member of the Philippines Coalition. As part of our coalition and the way we collaborate with each other, we felt it was a great opportunity to have an international climate change program that our teens and the young people in Albay could be involved with simultaneously. The opportunity that we had to collaborate with the Albay Y was incredibly valuable. We learned from them many strategies that they employ to mitigate climate change, which is much more urgent because of the impacts, the direct impacts that it's already having on their environment. The climate challenges we face requires everybody's participation in trying to come up with solutions true of any complex problem like this. 
The Huron River Watershed Council had a snorkeling camp this summer that I worked with and we basically created an experience that allowed the youth to uh, get to know the Huron River, what helps it, what hurts it, and provide them with the opportunities to educate themselves and the tools to educate others. Simula nang naglunsa dito ang YMCM, naging maganda ang aming pangingisda at nawala na ng basura at mas lalong marami ang aming nahuhuli. Malaking tulong ang naitulong sa amin ng YMCM, lalo na sa aking mga anak na mas lalaki pa sila para sa kalinisan ng ating karagatan at maghahanap buhay din sila, makikita nila kung gaano kalinisan ng ating karagatan. Through Care for Climate Project, we young leader were given an opportunity to contribute solutions to pressing environmental issues that we have in our society. Before that, we have no idea what carbon footprint is. But YMCA taught us everything that we need to learn as an eco-leader. By engendering in the participants a sense of responsibility for our local environment, Hopefully, that sense of responsibility will eventually be extrapolated to our environment at large. While we may be in different parts of the world, we all have the same drive and the same passion. I really feel a connection with those people. Even if I don't know them at all, I feel a connection with them. We are seeing with our own eyes that the deforestation is happening around us and is the right time to act and do something in order to prevent it. The village where we live, that uh, one day we saw a very beautiful hill with the trees and the next day it was gone. Deforestation is a huge concern for me as a young person because uh, we are losing our natural environment. The forest and natural habits uh, then once surrounded us are slowly disappearing. Team Trees is a movement uh, inside of our YMCA where uh, each year we tend and we are planning to donate trees in order to prevent deforestation and in order to make this issue less bigger in Kosovo. So we're actually at Camp Pedersham, uh, which is the YMCA's new youth empowerment camp. And just behind me is the tree nursery that the Team Trees team have asked can live on our camp. Uh, this is really good for us because it means that we have a program that runs beyond the life of the program. We will make trees that are going to be donated every year to schools, to the community, to other youth projects. Uh, it doesn't stop deforestation, but it certainly helps combat it. When it takes time to grow a tree, it's always the right time to grow one. An action like this that we as uh, Team Trees did is action that uh, fight directly climate change and uh, inspire others to act. We started at the Youth-Led Solution Summit where we had to discuss and to come up with a solution and we did uh, some research together as a team and we came with uh, the problem that one of the most concerning problems in Kosovo is deforestation and we wanted to uh, tackle this issue when it comes to climate crisis in Kosovo. A lot of people use wood burning and also uh, also use wood in order for them to provide the heat. Uh, because uh, economically, uh, Kosovo is not a very sustainable country and sometimes uh, this way or illegal cutting is the only way like to provide heat uh, for the country. A lot of time, for example, people don't have the chance uh, to be uh, educated on this topic such as deforestation, climate crisis, and we see a lack of education but also the resources and infrastructure to involved in uh, like uh, recycling activities and recycling projects. I think every community should have a tree nursery and I think every community should be responsible for replanting trees or reforestation. So this is the uh, Amindoroku school where Team Trees planted some trees together with young people uh, as part of a uh, rising awareness campaign. It's very important to say that here we've had a project uh, that uh, has involved kids who have planted a lot of trees here and uh, pines that have uh, created a better environment for uh, children. 
It is uh, one of the most important uh, issues that we must take care of. So we must know that uh, if we want the future generations to have a healthy uh, lifestyle, we must uh, keep an eye on uh, what's happening with the trees. Maybe we cannot prevent deforestation 100%, but each of us can plant some trees and uh, make this process less impactful, uh, in this case, deforestation. When I hear the term climate change and climate crisis, my initial thought is always sad. We are already feeling the impacts of climate change today. This is not something we're waiting to see or we're expecting to see. How we treat our natural environments today will affect the environments that we will live in as youth tomorrow. All right, everybody. For those of you who don't know, this project was created to address one of the issues that we have identified here in the island of Oahu, which is food waste. We have eight main islands, and Oahu is one of the main Hawaiian islands, and at the center of Oahu is Honolulu. Although I'm not from here, I was born and raised in the island of Saipan, which is also another Pacific island. Growing up, I have heard and talked a lot about how the Kanaka Maoli, the native Hawaiians, have learned over hundreds of years of trial and error of how to effectively utilize their land to create a system to get the resources they need, not just for their generation, but for the generations to follow. Specifically in our project, we looked at food waste. It's a resource that we should utilize, but we do not, which is mind-blowing because in Hawaii, we have a beautiful climate that's able to grow our food and farm, and the importance of farming is that we're able to be sustainable as an island community. About 90% of the food that we eat here is imported. We have the resources here in the island to grow our own food and to sustain ourselves. With the food waste issue, we wanted to help drive that cycle of getting the food that we don't use and bringing it back to the aina, bringing it back to the land. This project, Global Warming, uses the power of worms to break down the energy that is found within this food waste. It was something that we felt that we could do locally, uh, sustain it, to grow it uh, at all of our different YMCA's. Then COVID hit. We weren't able to go into the branches, we weren't able to start these projects at the local communities like we thought we were uh, able to. And that's when e-waste came up. Everybody was buying new computers, buying new televisions for their time at home. Uh, the question came up is, well, where are they putting all the old stuff? A lot of us see it in the streets, uh, or things are just thrown into the landfill where they don't belong. We've been able to hold three events so far, and each event, we were able to partner with other community organizations. Um, with them, we're able to use their resources and their reach to promote our events. And so far, we're able to collect over 7,500 pounds of e-waste. Every single thing that happens or doesn't happen makes a significant impact. The piece of litter that someone throws, the TV that someone throws, that'll directly impact our local climate. A program that'll mitigate that, or a project that'll mitigate that, even for one day, makes a significant impact. The e-waste project actually came about after our trip to London 175. Uh, all of us, the students and staff combined, were super inspired by the work that was being done by young people uh, and YMCA's across the world. We saw these leaders that look like us, that talk like us, that think like us, and the capabilities that they had despite being young. They made personal impact and decision themselves to create that change in their local communities. We in Hawaii have a personal connection with each other because of our different cultures and traditions of protecting the land that feeds us. We will no longer wait for us to grow up, to have the fancy titles, to have the years of experience. Climate change is not going to wait for us, and neither should we. Bethlehem is uh, one of the most cities in Palestine because of its historical and religion uh, place amongst a uh, lot of people in the world.
the Green Box uh, project aimed to um, provide uh, initial uh, tools for uh, 350 families all around Palestine to start farming. Even if, they're, if they don't have lands, don't have gardens, they can just do farming with little equipment. This project uh, is the seed for changing the community because communities do not know the importance of sustainable agriculture and agriculture in general. We got inspired because uh, due to the fact that uh, there are becoming less and less greener areas in our cities and uh, lots of people live in apartments with no land around it. So we wanted to encourage them to plant more uh, seeds and plant their own food that they can use in the kitchen and to show them how easy it is to plant, uh, to plant plants. مشروع برين جرين ومشروع فادني بحياتي من ناحيه انه كنت اشوف انه اني إن ازرع شغله كثير صعبه فانا شو بعد ما بعد ما جربت اني ازرع شفت شغله كثير سهله وكثير حلوه وعلمتني كثير شغلات بحياتي Considering the water shortage in our area, we also provided some steps on how to take care of the plants with the smallest amount of water that they can. We started this project because we wanted to see change in our community. We wanted to see more greener areas, not just on the roads, but on balconies as well. We wanted people to see that it's not hard to take care of a plant. That's why we gave uh, a small booklet uh, with, uh, with the boxes, telling them on steps how to take care of plants. We just hoped that this would be the, the uh, beginning of planting more. Education in sustainable agriculture is really important because climate change can be faced by changing culture. Behavior doesn't change without advocacy and education. When I hear a climate crisis or climate change, I feel a future guilt, if it makes sense, because I feel like if we're in the near future or the far future and we look back on now, and see that nothing has actually changed and the no action has actually taken place, we'll feel guilty and we feel like we could, have had, we could have done something and we could have done some action to change that and to stop that, but we didn't. So it kind of drives, drives me and motivates me to do something and do change right now in this moment, in this time frame, so in future we don't feel that guilt. By teaching people how to do sustainable agriculture, we do uh, change the, the adverse effects of climate change. When we started this, this project, we were aiming to change behavior, to, to change mentality, and to spread like a culture of greener Palestine, greener world. I'd like to think of us as global citizens rather than local citizens. Uh, so when seeing more green and more people are motivated and inspired by this project to plant more plants on their balconies and their homes, it inspires us more and motivates us more to do such pro projects and uh, to do more about the climate change and more action, not just talking and awareness. Education changes communities, changing realities. Uh, sustainable agriculture is the future for the planet. I feel like we put a lot of time and uh, energy investing in the leaders of tomorrow, but uh, sometimes not giving them a good example. If you want to have great leaders of tomorrow, we have to, we have, the leaders of now have to be great, they have to do action, they have to inspire the, the young that are aspiring to be the leaders of tomorrow with real action, not only words. Arequipa es una hermosa región al sur del Perú, está hacia la costa del país y estoy seguro que si alguno de ustedes visita eh, Arequipa se va a quedar enamorado. Eh, está en la, en la capital, en la provincia capital, en Arequipa, está Mollevaya, el distrito de Mollevaya, en parte del cual es la Asociación de Vivienda La Mampía. En la Asociación de Vivienda La Mampía viven unas 60 familias, el acceso a agua y saneamiento en la mampía es inexistente. Y no es tampoco un lugar plano, ¿no? Hay bajadas, subidas, y eso dificulta para los niños. Y en el aspecto de, del agua es más que todo la deficiencia. Agua y desagüe que trae también porque no hay, son, solo tenemos baños secos. Ese sería el defecto de, de la asociación. La Mampía es un pueblito que está lleno de piedritas que recién está poblándose. 
es un pueblo pequeñito que recién estamos empezando de cero. Ya íbamos poco a poco, hay pocos vecinos que aún viven, hay muchas personas que todavía no vivimos por falta de muchas cosas. En La Mampía, cada semana un camión cisterna se acerca para abastecer a la asociación de agua. Eh, los ciudadanos tienen que pagar con su propio dinero para tener agua y ni siquiera alcanza para un acceso fluido de 24 horas. La crisis climática a todos nos incomoda. Es una realidad que los jóvenes vemos en las tres ciudades y en todo el Perú. Cuando pienso en cambio climático, en crisis climática, me siento frustrado, indignado, tengo miedo, que es un problema demasiado grande. Y sí me afecta mucho porque no tengo con qué agua cocinar para mis hijos. ¿Por qué no me siento así? Mira, si usted ve, ese es mi bañito que tengo ahí. Y realmente sí la necesito. El proyecto es un más muro. Eh, estamos haciendo ladrillos, ecoladrillos, para hacer baños para, para la asociación de acá de la Mampía. Un ecoladrillo, como su nombre le indica, es un ladrillo ecológico que está hecho puramente de plástico. Para hacerlo se necesita una botella de 500 mililitros, la cual se llena con plástico que se va compactando. Aproximadamente mil ecoladrillos se necesitan para crear una ecobase. Una ecobase es una infraestructura sanitaria hecha con ecoladrillos que permite eh, un espacio digno para las personas en la mampía para utilizar, eh, para hacer sus necesidades. Esta infraestructura sanitaria está conectada a un biodigestor que procesa las aguas residuales y permitiría crear áreas verdes en la asociación. Eso es aproximadamente una tonelada de plástico retirada del medio ambiente. Sumac Muru es más que un proyecto, es una idea potente que cree en la transformación de recursos inorgánicos que todos desechan en una nueva oportunidad de construir algo que pueda mejorar la realidad de otras personas. Bueno, todos tenemos eh, esperanzas ¿no? que, que algún día cambie y que sea para una buena mejora continua, ¿no? En el proyecto trabajamos la economía circular y lo hacemos en base a tres pilares, en aprender, en transformar, pero sobre todo en inspirar. Por eso es que el proyecto significa buena semilla. Y creemos que esta idea puede seguir creciendo y ser una organización con un propósito social que se pueda replicar en otras realidades, latitudes, países, provincias y que sea un movimiento porque esta idea es potente y puede ser de mucha ayuda para el cambio climático. As a parent, when I hear the words climate change, first thing that comes to mind is what does the, the future hold for our children? It makes you wonder what kind of a world we live for, for the next generation. I feel very sad to think that uh, climate will impact very negatively, especially on the generations to come. Let's hold our hands together in fighting against the climate change because this is our world. If we don't do anything, then we are going to destroy it. I live in the northern region of Zambia, the Copper Belt. As why climate change, we are putting all our efforts in sensitizing, especially the younger generations, and relaying the information on how we can put our heads together in trying to alleviate some of the habits and behaviors that we have that are causing or increasing climate change. Yeah, so as you can see, these are some of the materials that we use to re re recycle and make our artifacts. From this trash, we turn it into treasure. We as YMCA and as individuals are taking part, saving the environment and protecting our children, our future children, from a world that is destroyed and that is polluted. It is an exciting 
time for us, especially that we have partnered with Zambezi Paper Mills, a company that is based in our community that is doing their part in recycling paper. And so it, it is an exciting part of the story that we are making everybody uh, look at paper in a different light. There is a change in the atmosphere. There is a lot of uh, heat, a lot of storms going on. The crisis that we are is being caused by us, the humans. Single-handedly, it is impossible for us to deal with this problem. So the more people that are involved, the greater the impact we are going to make. So basically, these are some of the pieces that I picked out from the environment around the school. And I'm going to be demonstrating to the learners how we are going to transform these boxes into actual household items that you can use on a daily basis. They are going to transform boxes into lanterns or lampshades. Some are even going to turn them into a bag, something like that, which is very important. It's a skill that we want these learners to acquire in order for them to help serve the environment. People should learn how to keep the environment clean so that the world can be a better place for the future generation. I am really grateful to them for bringing these projects to us and we've learned so many things and we'll get to educate so many people. Youngsters like me, wherever you are and whatever that you're doing, try and reduce climate change by all means possible because we are polluting as well as destroying our own environment. The young ones, when they see paper or plastic in the environment, they should not look at it as only waste, that they can make something out of it, they can recycle it. I feel happy that this program has been started at our school in my time and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be part of that team to make it to reach its fruition. If you have to change any generation, you have to change the information that people have. We are noticing a responsibility in their way of living. They are able to pick up trash and uh, they have come to learn that uh, that trash can be put to good use. The message that we're spreading is sinking into the hearts and minds of the community and the learners at large. I believe Mother Earth has no mouth of its own and we should be its mouthpiece. Because if we don't, who will? The onus is on us. Nuestro mundo está en crisis. Hay ecosistemas que colapsan, personas que están sufriendo. Y necesitamos hacer un cambio ya. Ese cambio tiene que venir de cada uno de nosotros, de donde sea que estemos y lo que sea que podamos hacer. If people will not act together towards our goal to have a sustainable environment, everything we have and the future of our children will perish. The consequences if we don't fight the climate change are going to be in our generation and also in future generations. So it's very important for young people to be active and do something about what is happening around us. As the youth, our role there is to make sure our voice is heard, to be part of these conversations, to be part of these negotiations, to be part of the solutions that will inevitably affect the futures that we will inherit. Thank you.